Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at one of the individual gas laws, Gay-Lussac's law. Here is our syllabus dot point. To recap, gas laws are a set of laws which describe the behaviour of gases under various conditions. They assume that gases have multiple what we call ideal properties, which are that they have low density, they are free-flowing or forming, meaning that they have the ability to fill the volumes of containers and can leak through cracks, they are compressible and expandable, and they are diffusive. So Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac was an 18th century chemist and physicist who was also one of the first to observe that volumes of gas react particularly in stoichiometric ratios. This observation is relevant as it leads to Gay-Lussac forming Gay-Lussac's law, which states that pressure is directly proportional to temperature if the volume and amount of gas are held constant. This relationship is expressed mathematically as P is directly proportional to T, or that P1 divided by T1 equals to P2 divided by T2 after a change in either pressure or temperature. We can define pressure as being the force that's exerted on the walls of the container or between the particles of the gas, and the temperature as the average kinetic energy of particles that exist within the volume. Pressure is usually measured in the unit pascal, and it can also be measured in kilopascals or KPAs, which equals to 1000 pascals. It can also be measured in atmospheres, which are equal to 101,325 pascals or 101.325 kilopascals. This conversion needs to be remembered. Temperature is a measure using the unit Kelvin, which is the absolute measure of temperature starting from zero, as well as degrees Celsius, which can be converted to Kelvin by adding 273.15, so that 25 degrees, for example, would be 298.15 Kelvin. We can derive Gay-Lussac's law by observing the ideal gas formula PV equals to nRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, N is amount, R is the universal gas constant, and T is temperature. If we keep all the other variables the same, so V, N, and R, then if P is increased, then similarly, T must be increased proportionally by the same amount. Thus, after a given change in temperature or pressure, because they are directed proportional, the initial pressure P1 divided by the initial temperature T1 should equal to the final pressure P2 divided by the final temperature T2. Like with the other gas laws, it's important to recognize that this relationship is only held true when the other variables are held constant, which in this case is the number of moles of gas and the volume. Here we can see a positive relationship between pressure and temperature in kelvins. The gradient is positive, indicating a positive correlation between the variables which are directly proportional. Notice that the pressure is zero when temperature in kelvins is equal to zero. To illustrate Gay-Lussac's law, let's consider a boiling pot of water. As the water is boiling initially, the particles are moving around the pot with a certain amount of energy. However, as the temperature increases, the water begins to boil more vigorously. The pressure inside of the pot builds up until the lid is no longer able to stay on top of the pot and it falls off. We can use this understanding of Gay-Lussac's law to consider what some day-to-day -day applications of it are. A pressure cooker for food, for example, is an example of Gay-Lussac's law in practice. In the pressure cooker, food is sealed inside of a metal pot which has a secured lid. As the temperature inside the pot increases, the particles also begin to move more vigorously. We know from Gay-Lussac's law that since pressure and temperature are proportional, an increase in the internal temperature of the pot will also lead to an increase in internal pressure of the pot at a proportional amount. To release this pressure that is inside of the pot, a regulator is pulled and the internal particles then escape the pot. To better illustrate Gay-Lussac's law, the temperature inside the pot does not immediately drop proportionally to the decrease in pressure. And the reason why is because volume and amount has no longer been held constant, so Gay-Lussac's law no longer holds true once the regulator has been pulled. Another example of Gay-Lussac's law in action are aerosol cans. Aerosol cans have warning labels on them to avoid open flyers. This is because the aerosol is flammable. They can explode when they are exposed to high temperatures. Like with the pressure cooker, because the can contains aerosol, there are gas particles moving initially on the inside of the can. This also means that there is a pre-existing pressure. If we increase the temperature too drastically, however, the pressure inside the container will be increased to the point where the structural integrity of the container is no longer able to be maintained 
and the gas in the aerosols can can explode out through an opening. Here are some practice questions. The first question reads, a certain amount of gas in a canister exerts a pressure of two atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is increased to 50 degrees Celsius, what would be the new pressure exerted by the gas in atmospheres? So we know that we can use the formula P1 over T1 equals to P2 over T2. Our pressure is initially two atmospheres, and our temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Our new pressure is P2, and our new temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. This seems obvious in that P2 is going to be double the amount, and thus it is four atmospheres. But it's important to note that Celsius is not the absolute temperature, and the temperature for this P1 over T1 relationship must be an absolute temperature. So we must convert the degree Celsius into Kelvin to check out our answer. So in this case, it'd be 2 divided by 25 plus 273.15 equals to P2 divided by 50 plus 273.15. And so P2 must equal to 50 plus 273.15 times 2 divided by 25 plus 273.15. And that gives us a value of 2.17 atmospheres. Our next question says, A sealed container of nitrogen gas has a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. According to gay lussacs law, what will be the pressure inside the container if the temperature is raised to 80 degrees Celsius? So we have to take the same steps that we took previously, turning Celsius into Kelvin to find out our answer. So originally, P1 equals to 1.5. T1 equals to 273.15 plus 20, because it's 20 degrees Celsius. And T2 equals to 273.15 plus 80. So we thus work out that P2 equals to P1 multiplied by T2 divided by T1, and that equals to 1.8 atmospheres. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.